Hi and welcome to another video. I hope you have a great weekend. Today let's have a look at the at post frame callback method, which is something that I'm pretty sure that you have used with your Flutter applications, for example, to show a snack bar inside of your build method. Today I would like to have a look how this method actually works or what makes it work and why does it fix some things in your application that otherwise doesn't work for you. Let's have a look that here I am looking at the scheduler bindings and this method is defined on scheduler bindings. And sometimes there is a misconception going or people are confused whether they should be using this method on scheduler bindings or on the widget bindings over here. However, if you have a look here at superclass constraints on this widget binding mixin, then you have these scheduler bindings over here and down somewhere there, if we can find it or just search for it, we have this add post frame callback method which is inherited and it's inherited from scheduler binding over here. Then let's have a quick look at the documentation of this method and this says where is that it schedules a callback at the end of this frame. This frame means that the current frame that is being rendered and this does not, does not request a new frame. So a new frame is not being uh, executed after current frame if we have a callback. Then this callback is running during a frame and just after persistent uh, frame callbacks we will have a look at this also today. And if a frame is in progress and the post frame callbacks haven't been executed yet then the registered callback is still executed during this frame. So this is something to note. And then finally, this callback is execute, these callbacks are executed in an order that they have been added synchronously. So you are adding the callbacks one by one and then they are executed again in the same order. So first in, first out basically. And then also we have an information here that post frame callbacks cannot be unregistered and they are called only once. So if they were called once, then they are probably removed and they will never be called again because they will not be there anymore. Okay, at this point, let's move here to my terminal. And I have a very simple application, which is just standard Dartpad application. And it has this stateful widget, my widget with some state. Now in the init state method, I've prepared two calls basically to this um, at post frame callback. So here I would like to show you basically that they are later executed in the order that they were added. So we have one on the widget bindings and scheduler bindings over here. Doesn't matter which one you use in the end. And then now in the build method to just quickly show you in what situation we potentially may want to have this um, at post frame callback used. I'm trying to show a snack bar on my scaffold. And now I'll run this application for you. Let's also see the code, so output. There is the application and you can see that first of all the snack bar is working, but we have this beautiful red screen with an error that um, the show snack bar method cannot be called during build. And well, this is a valid error over here because apparently this method cannot be called during a build and we were doing exactly that. So if you are Googling how to solve this problem, then you will basically see that you take one of these two methods and then in this callback, inside of this callback, you will show your snack bar is dead. So now let's run that. There we go. Now we have our hello world application and I'm a snack bar is also shown over here and everything works fine. Let's have a look also at our console log. So here we have first flutter init state called. There we go. Here is init state. Then we have flutter build state called over here. So we printed that. And finally, we can see that flutter widget bindings, which was added first is executed then scheduler bindings, which is here. And we can also print something over here. Let's call it added at build. There we go. And now you can see, first of all, so I had a hot, re hot reload over here on save. And this time again, build was run. And after build, this added to build callback was called. And of course, because we added these two callbacks here on init, then they were added only once. And now in the next build, when the next frame is rendered, basically they are not called again because, well, they're not there anymore. So let's kill the app. And now we should see all these three callbacks to print something. So our application is here. And then we see that we have widget bindings from here called. Then we have scheduler binding from here and added at build in order that they are basically executed. First init state executes, then build executes. So I think we understand how to use this add post frame callback. 
But now, how does it really work? So we had seen in the documentation a couple of things about that. But now let's try to actually understand it. So let's go into the definition of this method, which is over here. And here in the definition, in the scheduler bindings, you can see we have this final list of frame callbacks, which has this post frame callbacks. So it's nothing more than just a list of callbacks. When we call this method add post frame callback, we do nothing more than adding any callback to this list. Now let's try to find when it's actually used. There we go. So we have this method handle draw frame, and here they call, say you that called by the engine to produce a new frame. And now you may have heard that this thing widgets bindings, it's basically a glue between the Flutter engine and the Flutter framework. And so that's exactly what it is. It tells you that here this method is called by the engine to produce a new frame with our widget system. And then also we have information over here that this method is called immediately after handle begin frame, which is defined just above here. And it calls all the callbacks registered by at persistent frame callback, first of all, which typically derive the rendering pipeline. And then it calls the callback registered by at post frame callback. So here you can see already that we have two different callbacks. If we read this method, then first we have some setup, we have some assertions, and then in this try catch block, what happens first? We have this persistent frame callbacks. And what happens here is we also have some list of callbacks, and here in this for loop, we basically call on each of them and invoke them. Next, we have this post frame callbacks. And Almost the same thing happens here. Just notice that first thing we do is we make this defensive copy over here. If you watched my video about retrofit, which is a little bit long, but then we also looked what the defensive copy is in that video. So we're making this defensive copy here of the callbacks and then we run this loop. We go through every and each of these callbacks and we invoke them. However, before we run this loop, then over here we're clearing the list of the post frame callbacks that we have saved inside of this class. This list is being cleared, then we run this copied uh, list basically over here. In this way, the next time this handle draw frame will work, which will be on the next uh, frame, when the next frame is requested, then we don't have this callback registered anymore. And this is what you've seen before, that when the build method after the hot reload run again, then we didn't see these two callbacks here printing anything anymore because they just simply weren't added because the init state method it doesn't run second time of course on a rebuild of a widget. So finally you can see that we also have this persistent callbacks. The persistent callbacks can also be added just the difference here is that we don't remove them. So once they are registered these callbacks will be executed on every and every frame that there is. And so finally we have this handle draw frame method which is just following this handle begin frame. So here we prepare a frame and here we are handling drawing this frame. Now if we have a look over here, then in the documentation it says basically that it adds a persistent frame callback, then this persistent callbacks are called after some other callbacks, so there is even other type of callbacks, and this that does not request a new frame. We've seen that in code, that it's just executed, the callbacks are executed, they don't request a new frame, new frame will not be done. And then over here it says that persistent frame callbacks cannot be unregistered, first of all, so if you register them, then Every time the engine will be calling handle draw frame, then every time it will be basically called. Finally, to answer the question why this helps, why this make this snack bar works is because this callback is then called after the build method was done. So the build method is running, it built your widget, you added a callback, and then this callback is run still when the frame is being rendered, but after the widget is created itself. So then we don't have the problem that we cannot um, run something that we are not supposed to run in the build method because we don't run it anymore in the build method. I hope this video helped you a little bit um, understand how this method works and, and how these callbacks works and how it is done under the hood. For now, that's all and bye bye.